Okay, hi everyone, welcome to Singapore Government Deep Dive Session. My name is Jillian and I'll be your host for this evening or morning. Okay, so our sessions today will feature various agencies within the Singapore government, which operate within each tech domain. Um, we are hosting simultaneous sessions uh, to make sure you have joined the right track. Uh, please check that uh, currently we are doing, uh, we are actually the cybersecurity and cloud infra track. So if you are supposed to go to the, the other track, uh, you can switch over by scanning the QR code here. So for today's session, we will start off by uh, with cybersecurity first, and we will cover cloud and infrastructure in an hour's time. So we will start off with a short intro by Deputy Secretary Tan Kok Yang, who will share with us uh, opportunities and challenges presented by the Singapore Smart Nation journey. A warm welcome to all of you. Thank you for joining us at the recruitment session of the Singapore Tech Forum 2020. Why are we so keen to recruit during this COVID year? The answer to that cannot be more evident. We have been fortunate to be able to rapidly deploy digital solutions to help in the effort to keep the country safe, precisely because we have a strong core of engineers to rely on. From digital contact tracing, trace together and safe entry, to channels of communications, our engineers have been able to deliver. By strong, I don't just mean strong individuals who are technically capable and creative. That's important, of course, but I also mean a strong team willing to support one another, whether we're in GovTech, DSTA, IHIS, or anywhere else in government, willing to work shoulder to shoulder with the policy and operational teams in government, willing to go the extra mile, willing to take on crazy deadlines, and willing to do not just visible, exciting work, but often the back-breaking but necessary work of organizing data, formatting the standards, getting systems to just talk to each other. All of this because they know that they are not here simply to sell a product or catch the most eyes, eyeballs, but they are here to play their part, to protect the public, to allow the country to reopen. And we are recruiting because there's so much more to be done. The public sector has much to do, help the economy recover and thrive, assist those in need, businesses under pressure, ensure a sustainable green recovery. Digital technology alone is not the silver bullet to all of this, of course, but it will have a big role to play in terms of enabling the use of data to understand the situation, creating the platforms to better communicate, coordinate and collaborate with citizens, building the infrastructure to allow policy to be implemented in an agile manner. So we need good people to join us, to be builders, creators, engineers, to build the tools, overhaul our architecture, exploit the capabilities of cloud, defend against cyber attacks. And this is why we are so keen on recruiting. But why should you join us? For one, working in tech in Singapore government gives you the first-hand experience of how tech can contribute to the public good. It gives you opportunities to use your skills and your knowledge of technology to directly impact and improve businesses and citizens' lives. Being part of the whole nation effort to develop Singapore into a smart nation this role in the public will promise a sense of meaning and purpose that few tech companies can offer. Second, we will provide opportunities to nurture and deepen your technical skills. We are building competency-based performance frameworks that recognize demonstrated technical competency. We are also allowing engineers flexibility to choose a path within government, be it being a specialist that focuses on building depth and expertise in a particular domain, such as in machine learning, software engineering, cybersecurity, or product management, or to be a chief information officer or chief technology officer to lead teams in developing technical solutions that bring about change in an agency, in a ministry, in a step board. Third, we have a range of jobs to offer in government, different challenges in different aspects of what the government does, which range across various agencies. So allow me to cite some examples. In GovTech, if you join GovTech, you will help us transform the public sector, turn the idea of a smart nation digital government into reality. By joining GovTech, you can make a difference to the everyday lives of citizens, businesses, and communities. 
In IMDA, if you join IMDA, you can look forward to playing a critical role in shaping Singapore's Infocom media landscape and chart the way ahead for our digital economy. You will help drive transformation for our SMEs and our enterprises. Now, as Singapore becomes increasingly connected with our millions of smartphones and Internet of Things devices, Singaporeans and, and organizations are increasingly susceptible to sophisticated cyber attacks. Hence, we also need talented cybersecurity professionals to safeguard our landscape, our digital landscape. By joining CSA, you will be entrusted with the task of keeping Singapore's cyberspace safe and secure. Now, of course, this is not all the jobs that are in government. We want to offer one career infinite opportunities where you join us, uh, allowing you to move from domain to domain to broaden your personal experience and exposure, and of course, to make the best use of your expertise. There are different tech career opportunities for you to explore across different domains. You will solve real business problems with a technical lens and move the needle on national issues ranging from defense and cybersecurity, economic development and tourism, to housing, transport and healthcare. So I want to end by a caveat. I want to say that I'm not speaking to you as a government engineer with the knowledge of a career of an engineer in government. Now, when you engage in the deep dive sessions later, I hope you have the opportunities to speak to the real guys, the engineers, those at the front line, hear from them on their actual experience. Some have joined us from day one, uh, others from industry, and you can ask them about their encounters in the public service, what they are happy or unhappy about, what their experience have been, and how what they have they have learned in the private sector has helped. Now, as an administrator working with engineers, I can tell you that we are beginning to build a culture that respects and recognizes deep engineering capabilities and skills within government. So no longer is IT a backroom function to fix broken laptops, but it's a strategic capability to allow us to serve our citizens better. We have much to improve, of course, but that's why these engineers are here with us, to make things better. And we hope that some of you can consider joining them. So now, allow me to pass the time to the MC to kickstart the sessions into the various domain areas proper. Thank you. Right, so now, <clears throat> now let's invite the various agencies on board to share about the work they do in their domains. But before we start, uh, we would like to share with you some ground rules. Uh, this session will be recorded. And you should only ask your questions in the Q&A panel, which is at the bottom of your screen, instead of the chat function, okay? And if you want to ask a question, please type in the following format, uh, the agency name whereby you are addressing to, followed by the question. Example, GovTech, hyphen, where is your office? Okay, and please be courteous and considerate to the speakers and all the other attendees at this webinar. Okay, and if you want to join us in our Slack channel and also to drop your CV, you can scan this QR code here at, uh, in front of your screen now. Okay, so without further ado, I shall uh, invite the very first speaker. His name is Eugene Ng. Um, he's from GovTech and he will be sharing with us his life as a cybersecurity specialist here. Over to you, Eugene. Okay, thanks Jillian. A very warm welcome to all of you and I'm really glad you could join us for these sessions. Uh, my name is Eugene and today I'll be giving an overview of what life is like at GovTech's cybersecurity group, also known as CSG. I'll also be sh briefly sharing on how the government deals with the phishing threat. Yeah, just give me a moment to... There we go. So to begin on a light-hearted note, I thought to start with a meme on some of the perceptions that people may have about what we do in cybersecurity. For instance, my friends think that I'm some hacker. My mom thinks I fix broken computers. My kids think I'm saving the virtual world. But in reality, it's closer to firefighting when incidents occur. So jokes aside, here's the customary who am I. Simply put, I'm an engineer and I work with fellow engineers at CSG, where we develop cyber software products for use in the government. Over the years, I've tested, took apart, and exploited various software. And these experiences really help to shape how we do cyber product development today. 
Before we go more in depth, you might be wondering what does the cybersecurity group do? And to summarize that in our vision, we secure the Singapore government's cyberspace, making our digital government safer. Here, we play a supporting role to various ICT systems, including key smart nation and national projects. Slightly below, you see this achieved through five interconnected pillars, each covering a different aspect of cybersecurity, such as strategy and policy, cyber defense, and the development of advanced capabilities, to name a few. Below each pillar is a non-exhaustive list of cyber roles which some of you may be familiar with, and you can check out the available opportunities via the link provided at the end of this presentation. So today I represent the cyber product engineers and I hope to give some insights as to what life is like here from our perspective. Okay, starting off with what does a typical day look like for us, which again, I'm sure many of you can relate. So this usually revolves around six core activities beginning with our daily stand-up, and it's usually followed by more discussions in smaller groups. We then let our fingers do the talking and have open clarifications with each other along the way. And as we progress through the day, it's not always a bit of roses. Uh, sometimes we receive crash dumps for our binary applications, and this may require some reverse engineering. Other times, our systems may go down or are sluggish, although it's few, and the team would have to troubleshoot those issues. We then end off the day with testing and our merge requests. While the activities here might not be in order, it broadly covers what we do. And if you've been reading along, hopefully you would have gotten a glimpse into some of the technologies that we use. All that being said, apart from the daily grind, um, we definitely encourage idea generation and do allocate some time and space for innovation, which brings us next to one of the ground up initiatives that we developed to deal with the phishing threat in the government. So just a little background before I go into it. To prevent public officers from getting phished, we developed a mechanism for officers to report suspicious emails. And these officers would then get an outcome whether that email is safe to interact with. With our frontline officers having to deal with queries from the public, it is important that they can get a timely response. So over the past two years, the reported number of phishing emails have been growing um, significantly. And with phishing emails getting more sophisticated, um, our officers would have to be more vigilant and protect uh, in order to protect our sensitive data. At the back end, we do have a distributed team of responders who evaluate each reported email. And this can be manpower intensive, especially during phishing campaigns. Considering that phishing is not the only threat that we have to deal with. Fortunately, what we've observed is that phishing emails that are sent generally have some similar patterns or even um, the body content. Hence, my team set out to see how we, we could reduce overheads, respond quickly, and go one step further to predict if an email is suspicious. So let's walk through the following scenario. Say during a phishing campaign, multiple emails are being sent to rest, uh, 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 users and they are being reported by these users across the government. These emails get processed by the back end using the minhash algorithm and then they are grouped based on how similar they are. So this means instead of having to evaluate all emails, responders will only need to evaluate one email from each group, saving lots of time and effort. Once an evaluation is done, the outcome is sent to all users who had reported this email. Subsequently, uh, at the bottom left, if a similar email was reported by a different user, it would be grouped according. It would be grouped accordingly, taking the existing outcome as well. So, what, whichever group is joined, it would have that outcome. And hence, the user who reported this email would also get a near real-time notification of the outcome. Over time, we've collected a sizable data set of different true and false positive phishing emails, and we use this to go one step further to train our AI model. So, in the future, at the bottom left again. 
um, when a new, su new suspicious email is reported, it will go through the model to provide an indication to both officers and responders, preempting them on the likelihood of an email being a phishing email. This may also help responders focus and prioritize such emails leading to faster turnaround times. So, sorry, while the system is not perfect, continuous improvement is always necessary, especially in the realm of cyber, where it's an ongoing race with the attackers. However, I hope this has given you some insights and maybe even ideas. And then we have some of our 2020 achievements and contributions to the community. And I thought to touch a bit on the culture that enables these. You see, at CSG, we encourage putting our skills that we have gained to the test, as well as give back to the global community in meaningful ways. So for those who are up to the challenge, um, you will find like-minded individuals here to go with you on that journey. And just to highlight a few that we are proud of, for starters coming in third place at this year's uh, DEF CON 28 CTF and speaking at Black Hat conferences. Uh, I'd also like to take this opportunity to share another ground up initiative and that's GovTech's inaugural cyber capture the flag competition that's coming up very soon this December. So if you're interested, gather some friends, head on to ctf.tech.gov.sg to find out more and of course sign up. Last but not least, if you have any further questions after the forum, you can reach us easily through the link, link tree slash SG tech forum. I think you'll be able to hop on to Slack and ask away, browse jobs, drop off your CV. Lastly, do check out our blog if you're keen to find out more about the various things that we do. I did publish a post today, so if you do have some time, check that out. And that's all I have. Thank you all for your time and attention. Thanks, Eugene. So now uh, we have Sebastian Chi, uh, who is from CSA. He will be sharing with us about uh, what they do in the National Cyber Incident Response Center. Over to you, Sebastian. Thank you, Julian. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Sebastian from uh, Cybersecurity Agency of Singapore's National Cyber Incident Response Center. So I head our digital forensics and incident response team. In my short presentation today, I'll be talking about uh, who we are, what we do in CSA, what a typical day looks like for an incident responder like myself in CSA, the technical as well as the not so technical work that we do. So CSA, we were formed on 1st April 2015 under the aegis of the Prime Minister's Office, but operationally and administratively, we are managed by the Ministry of Communications and Information due to the synergy of our work and MCI scope. We integrate national cyber master planning with operational and intelligence functions and provide dedicated and centralized oversight of national level cybersecurity functions. So on the top right hand corner of this slide, you can see Singapore cybersecurity strategy. This publication is available on CSA's website and it gives a very good overview of the scope of what CSA does. The strategy itself comprises four pillars. The first is about building a resilient infrastructure. This focuses on the protection of our critical information infrastructure that provide essential services such as your water, power or land transport. Uh, pillar two is about creating a safer cyberspace. Here the focus is more about the general public, your, your men in the street, your SMEs, so whereas our concern in pillar one is about protecting our core, our essential services, pillar two is about making the larger cyberspace safer for the public. The idea is that the cyber equivalent of preventive healthcare needs to be implemented. For example, just as doctors advocate regular health screening to detect diseases before they become more severe, we can also put in place measures to detect and respond to malicious cyber activities swiftly when they arise. So to this end, we have also published the Singapore Safer Cyberspace Master Plan this year and is also available on our website. The third pillar is about developing a vibrant cybersecurity ecosystem. This is industry focused. We look at how to train cybersecurity professionals, including mid-career professionals. Uh, we also work on building the local cybersecurity industry, helping cybersecurity startups to get off the ground and uh, bring technologically advanced companies into Singapore as well. The fourth pillar is about strengthening international partnerships. We look at how to foster international and regional cooperation, such as uh, your confidence building measures and cyber capacity building efforts, even within ASEAN itself. We are also participating in the United Nations Group of Governmental Experts, the UNGGE, and the Open-Ended Working Group, or OEWG, both of which study issues such as establishing international cyber norms or the applicability of international law to cyberspace. 
Undergirding the four pillars is our effort to construct a robust cyber talent pipeline, where we work on growing a pool of talented cybersecurity professionals to help realize all these initiatives that we have to strengthen cybersecurity for Singapore. So as you can see, what we do encompasses both the technical and the non-technical aspects. But since this is a tech forum and I'm from the Incident Response Center myself, I'll go into a bit more detail for the first pillar. So what is a day like in the life of an incident responder in CSA? Let me begin by saying that here at CSA, our focus is on advanced persistent threats or APTs. Uh, for the uninitiated, our APTs are threat actors or groups that are highly sophisticated and operate stealthily. Uh, they are usually well-resourced and state-sponsored. And there are increasingly more APT attacks being reported. Singapore hasn't been spared as well. You may have read about the case of uh, data being stolen from two of our, of our universities, NUS and NTU. This is back in 2017. Or more recently, the uh, Sing Health breach in 2018. These are some examples of the cases that we have actually been involved in. As incident responders in CSA, we deal with case investigations. When we are called to action, we will go on site to perform evidence collection tasks, such as cloning of hard disks, a collection of memory images, network logs, and so on. We perform a triaging to assess the extent and impact of the incident or breach. And uh, back into that, we will conduct our forensic examinations, such as host or endpoint forensics, uh, examining the evidence like your E01 images and uh, looking for relevant artifacts. We also perform uh, network forensics where we examine packet captures, network logs, firewall logs, and so on. If you find any malware, we pass it on to our in-house malware analysis team, who will then perform reverse engineering to figure out what the malware does. So through all these efforts, we try to understand how the attackers got in, what actions they performed, how they moved laterally in the network, and whether there was data exfiltration. What are their tactics, their techniques and procedures? What are the integrators of compromise? What are the remediation actions? And all these will go into, of course, our final report. And we'll look at how, to, uh, how and what we can then share with our stakeholders and partners. So other than case investigations, we also work on projects. Uh, one example that I'm currently involved in is uh, related to threat hunting. We are working with, with a partner, looking at what tools we can deploy inside the networks in order to hunt for clues of whether there are threats lurking inside there, trying to get at the crown jewels within those networks. Some other projects we work on are those that help to grow our own capabilities. So this is where we explore new tools or develop capabilities in areas such as uh, instant response in cloud environment or how to perform digital forensics and instant response in an operational technology or OT environment. These are basically your non-IT environments such as industrial control systems. Uh, think of your power plants, your real networks, and so on. So what about other technical work that we do in CSA? CSA also has an engineering center, and the folks there work on areas such as product assurance, evaluation, certification, and standards. So you may have heard also of the uh, Cybersecurity Labeling Scheme. This was announced at the, uh, at the uh, Singapore International Cyber Week last month. So for a start, the scheme will be applied to Wi-Fi routers and smart home hubs. These will be rated according to the level of cybersecurity provisions that they have, such as whether they use default passwords. So of course, products which have uh, met higher level of security standards will then have more stars on their label. So through this scheme, we hope to raise uh, overall cyber hygiene and awareness levels and better secure Singapore cyberspace. Um, other than that, we also do penetration testing, supposedly one of the uh, sexiest aspects of cybersecurity where everyone works in a hoodie or just wearing a hat in your office. Uh, we also deal with uh, certifications such as common criteria for which we are a certificate issuing nation. And we work with uh, standards and frameworks such as those published by NIST. But it's not all about the hardcore technical work. As I mentioned earlier, there are many other facets to the work we do in CSA. So we do partner other agencies in our efforts to grow the cybersecurity industry, such as incubation of startups or matching cybersecurity solutions from uh, companies to problems faced by others. We do work in outreach and education, where we make efforts in raising the level of cybersecurity awareness and knowledge of the general public. On the international front, a lot of work goes into building and maintaining our relationships and collaborations with international partners. Of course, we also have our policy and planning folks who help to do, develop the master plans and the strategies. So let me wrap up with a note on the culture in CSA. Cybersecurity is not just about the technical skills or working in darkened rooms, hunched over in front of a laptop, wearing your hoodie and watching lines of code just scroll past the screen at speeds that are just humanly impossible to read. So it is also about the people and it's also about fun. Uh, what you actually see here on screen is just an example of some of our own officers fooling around the lab. Um, okay, so before I go, I will just say that 
in cybersecurity, ultimately, we deal with human behavior. So on that note, humor is always helpful. And so I will just leave you with this comic that I found. Uh, that's all I have for today. And thank you very much for your attention. Thanks, Sebastian. Hi, everyone. My name is Chris, and I'm from the Center for Strategic Infocom Technologies. CSIT, for short, uh, in short, we are an agency under MINDEF, and we work a lot in applied research. Uh, I work in the area of cybersecurity, in, in particular in applied cryptography. We work together with quite a variety of partners in both the defense and public sectors to meet Singapore's security needs. CSIT has developed a, a, a number of CSIT has developed uh, deep expertise in quite a number of technical areas. Yes, give me a minute. Let me try to move the slides. On. Sorry for that. We have deep, deep technical expertise in several areas, and in particular, I'd like to focus on four important areas of work for us today. And that would be in cybersecurity, software engineering, data analytics, and cloud infrastructure and services. Let me focus a bit more on cybersecurity. At CSIT, I'm very fortunate to be working with a team of very talented and highly skilled individuals to provide technologies that safeguard Singapore from attacks in the cyberspace. In particular, we do a lot of research, development, and deployment of tools that uncover system vulnerabilities and help to ward off advanced cyber threats. This is all possible because of a significant amount of skill that we've built up over the years in vulnerability research, penetration testing, and malware analysis. Apart from our, our set of highly skilled engineers, we also work a lot with industry uh, that includes academic institutions and also government agencies. Next, I'd like to share with you a little bit more about CSIT as an organization. Firstly, we have a very unique course where we make important contributions to national security in two specific areas that I would like to highlight. One in cybersecurity, where we defend key national IT systems and networks against sophisticated attacks. And secondly, in the area of counterterrorism, where we identify and defend against terrorism threats to Singapore. Secondly, in terms of career options, we offer a wide variety of possible job roles, as well as uh, opportunities for personal as well as professional development. Apart from the space to build and innovate and develop your own ideas, uh, we also have uh, specialized and different tracks of career development opportunities that we believe will be able to meet the aspirations of both those who want to focus on research, project planning and management and facilitation to those who want to focus in a career of technical expertise and development. Lastly, I'm always happy to share with you our community, which I think is a very vibrant and exciting one. There are lots of opportunities to learn, not just from the group of highly talented individuals that we have amongst us, but also in the many training and professional development investments that CSIT uh, often makes in our engineers. Lastly, thank you for having me today. Uh, for more information, I'd like to invite you to go check out our website or contact our outreach team. I'll be over at the Q&A channel for any questions. Thank you and back to you, Jillian. Thanks, Chris. All right, so now we have uh, one of the rare women who is in cybersecurity. Um, specializing not only in inter enterprise security, but also telecom. 
um, security. Uh, her name is Christine Cole, and she's from INDA. Over to you, Christine. Yeah, hi everyone. A very warm welcome to you. And this is Christine from INDA. Um, I am actually from the Telecom Cybersecurity Engineering and Specialist Office in INDA. And I'll be talking to you about cybersecurity of which uh, I'll be sharing with you some of the challenges working as a telecom cybersecurity specialist. To add on, I have been in this role for more than four years since IMDA was founded in 2016. Prior to that, my focus was on enterprise security, focusing on policy and governance within the public sector. Uh, hang on a minute. Ah, okay. So um, before I start, let me give you a brief introduction on who we are. IMDA is a step board in Singapore and we are managing two critical sectors, namely the media sector and the infocom sector. This is done through regulating these two sectors by rolling out policies, best practices, so that we can safeguard the interests of both the consumers and also the enterprises and businesses. Another active role that IMDA plays in is promoting and regulating data protection of personal data used by the private sector. So next up, why is a resilient and cyber secure telecommunication infrastructure so important to Singapore. Firstly, the telecom infrastructure is the underlying enabler for almost every service used by consumers. Just imagine you need to communicate to your loved ones in Singapore, and that is delivered via the telecom infrastructure for mobile services, IP services, and video services. Also, your online shopping, and again, this is delivered through the telecom infrastructure to enable e-commerce services. Secondly, Singapore is also the base for many global companies, which more than 37,000 international companies, and that itself puts Singapore a critical note in the regional economy. Therefore, having an unreliable telecommunication network will have impact on citizens and businesses, more so during this challenging COVID period, where more and more people and businesses are relying and moving towards digitalization. Next, in the international space, not just in Singapore, around the world, governments are working with the telecoms to secure its infrastructure. For example, we see the UK publishing the telecoms supply chain in July 2019. We also see US having a framework for sharing of cyber threat information. All these efforts further illustrated the criticality and the emphasis to secure the telecom infrastructure. Now, I've come to the actual challenges that we face as a telecom cybersecurity specialist. First up, from the environment angle, we see rapidly evolving threats, more artificial intelligence powered threats, zero day attacks. And it is no longer about your traditional threats such as Trojan attacks, spamming, virus, and so on. From the technology perspective, 5G services is up and coming with things like your physical SIM card being replaced with software e-SIM and with the proliferation of more and more IoT devices. Vulnerabilities are also getting more complicated with new and updated firmwares and more and more uh, new business processes. There is a constant challenge that, that we have to level up our cybersecurity posture. So how do we do that? We do it through the three E's, enhance, expand, and extend. So when we talk about enhance, this is enhancing the governance regime to meet the evolving threats. And when we talk about expand, this is by performing gap review and active monitoring to cover new systems. And on expand, extend, it is extending the scope of protection to the wider ecosystems. For example, the supply chain. So other than the challenges, 
what are the attributes for telco, telecom cybersecurity? The first attribute is to be plugged into the latest concept and principles. For example, other than our usual CIA, which stands for confidentiality, integrity, and availability, we now also have to adapt to new concepts, for example, zero trust, defense in debt. And we will also have to keep pace with the global industry guidelines so that we can continue to ensure our latest technology adhere to the best practices in order to achieve continued security assurance of our infrastructure. And therefore, we are able to stay ahead of the competition in digitalization. Another important attribute is to be able to collaborate closely between the regulator and the telecom industry. This will allow us to have faster turnaround time in addressing security threats and vulnerabilities, as you will know who is in charge of what systems so that you can go direct to address some of the incident should it occur. Also, adopting an innovative culture is important. And this also means taking a risk-based approach to addressing cybersecurity threats. I've come to the last slide and I would like to conclude with some key takeaways. New technologies will offer opportunities, but on the other hand, it will also pose new threats and risks to businesses, more so when there are critical applications riding on top of the telecom infrastructure, such as the new and upcoming 5G systems. Therefore, we will need to continuously be vigilant to monitor and review the threats. As the saying goes, security is everybody's responsibility and we all have a role to play. I will end off by asking, so are you up for the challenge? Thank you. Thanks, Christine. Hi, uh, thanks for joining us today. I'm Marcus Tan, and I'm heading up the Cybersecurity R&D Department in the Institute for Infocom Research, also known as I2R, which is one of the research institute under ASTAR. And today I'll be sharing with you what we do in the department. Sorry. Uh... So I'm trying to move the slide. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, for those who are unfamiliar with I2R, we are one of the research institute under the Science and Engineering Council arm within ASTAR. Our mission is to contribute to the economic benefits of Singapore through R&D. Whatever we do should result in economic value creation and capture for Singapore, Singaporeans, and the Singapore economy. For example, we can be working with the public agencies to solve a difficult problem together. It can also be helping Singapore SMEs to level up their technology competency through collaboration projects so that they can compete more effectively in the global marketplace. In I2R, our positioning is between the Institute of Higher Learnings, example, the universities and the industry. We do a fair bit of translational and all applied uh, research of higher technology readiness level, also known as TRL, so that our technology receptacle partners can license or build products based on our technologies. We also do lower TRL research in the form of use inspired basic research, also known as UIBR. Unlike basic academic research in the universities, UIBR projects have two focus, to solve one or more practical problems as well as advancing science. Our cybersecurity department goals are to be a key player in the Singapore cybersecurity ecosystem that collaborators can look for Look to for R&D excellence and technology translation capability in cybersecurity. And to be known globally for multiple peaks of excellence in cybersecurity research. 
This diagram shows the different key considerations when we choose what areas we want to focus on. For example, what we should what we do should contribute to the A star nine desired outcomes, as well as the four pillars of the research, innovation, enterprise 2025 vision. We also need to consider our positioning among other entities like the universities and government agencies in the Singapore cybersecurity ecosystem. We should also have a good idea of who will be the potential receptacle of our technologies right at the beginning of our projects. The four main focus areas in the cybersecurity department are advanced AI for cybersecurity, where we apply AI techniques to solve problems in the cybersecurity domain, such as continual learning for network anomaly detection, as well as looking at cybersecurity aspects for AI, such as robust AI and trustworthy AI. For multimedia forensics, we will be focusing on detection of fake multimedia content such as deepfakes and fake news. For cyber physical security, we will be focusing on cyber security for industry 4.x and supply chain 4.x, as well as cyber security for autonomous systems, such as mobile robots, drones, and autonomous vehicles. For data security, one of the key focus is privacy preserving computing and analytics, in particular homomorphic encryption. We also have capabilities in the vulnerability assessment for the various types of systems. At the moment, we have 34 researchers in our department, including scientists with PhDs and engineers with masters and bachelor degrees. These are the three relatively new initiatives which we are embarking on. The first is digital trust focusing on privacy preserving computing and analytics. The second one is cybersecurity for 5G network. We will be working on end-to-end -end security for time sensitive applications, trust infrastructure for network slicing and zero trust for 5G networks. The third new initiative is building a deep fake, fake news detector. One of the key advantage of I2R or ASTAR is that we have a total of 500 plus researchers from the various Infocom domains, including both hardware and software, cybersecurity, AI, visual intelligence, communications, robotics, RF, etc., all housed under one roof. On top of that, we have a total of 5,000 plus researchers if you consider all the sister research institutes under ASTAR. This is especially useful considering the fact that problems nowadays are more complex and typically require people with different domain expertise to work together to solve the challenging problems. In terms of uh, staff composition, about uh, half of our uh, staff have PhDs to work on the complex algorithms. And we also have engineers with uh, skills to do the translational work. Culture-wise, we pride ourselves in providing a happy, homely, and happening working environment for our staff in ASTAR. The other key value we hold dearly is teamwork. We want a champion team, not just a team of champions. We have the following openings in the cybersecurity department at the moment. Research engineers, as well as research scientists, both at the junior and senior levels with skills in the one or more of the following. AI and cybersecurity, cybersecurity for industry 4.x supply chain, IoT, cybersecurity for autonomous systems, privacy preserving computing and analytics, and 5G cybersecurity. Other than the hard technical skills mentioned earlier, the other three key soft attributes we are looking for in new hires are the ability to learn, the willingness to learn, and passionate about cybersecurity. So if you're interested in embracing how the R&D career possess the uh, attributes uh, mentioned earlier, 
and can identify with the values shown here on the right in the in the trans in the slide, then A star I square R will be the right place for you. Come and talk to us. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Marcus. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, come to the end of the cybersecurity session. Uh, we will be starting the cloud and infrastructure as well as census and IoT session um, at 1.50, which is in about eight minutes time. Uh, so if you would like to join us, please come back uh, in eight minutes. Uh, before that, uh, you would like to drop your CV or join the Slack channel to talk to some of all these tech leaders or HR from the various agencies. You can join the Slack channel using the same QR code. Okay. And if you still have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, put it down in the Q&A chat box. Else you can head on over to the Slack channel and put down your questions there. Okay, see you guys later. Bye.